Absolutely, but in the cloud. Yes, now. Yeah. In the cloud. Go on, please. Sorry. Yeah, when I think about this question, also uh, that reminded me those societies um, uh, that that they don't or the, they don't want to see or they don't want to allow the thing to to work. Right? So I remember this day uh, when I asked uh, someone from Middle East he was attending the same class as I did. I, I was attending. Uh, after my graduation college, then uh, I did a post graduation, and that guy, I was, he was showing me, uh, he was showing me the the uh, pictures of his family, and his wife, and then I made the silly question, uh, if he was his wife was working somewhere else or doing what she was, doing, you know. And he got offended, you know, because evidently his wife didn't need to work. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize until then, I said, oh my gosh, I should, I should never ask that question, you know, because to me it was so normal, but evidently for society it was not. Yeah. Luna, turn off your video so your sound can be a little better. It's a little breaking up. Is I think you know that it's in, but it's a little. Oh, my video is on. You cannot see it's me off. because no, I have turn only off. percent Turn off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she suggests turning it off uh, for your voice to, to come to us without. Your voice can come better. Split or broken, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Because I have only 28 now. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of, sort it's of. It's hard a little bit to understand, maybe. Yes. And Leda wants to speak, Leda. Come on. Um, I think this is, uh, the spirits are telling us that one of the moral laws is work, right? Labor, uh, that, that's the purpose of we having to deal with our self-preservation. So. I think this is there to, to say that this is a moral law of the universe, work, labor. Um, and as you said, in the past, we didn't, we didn't consider it that way. And it's important because uh, in the spiritual world, like uh, in Astro City, that's one of the things that Andrea Luis finds out that um, to, to improve and to be well as a spirit we go on working in the spiritual realm right mm -hmm. so this is a, a a law of the universe yeah this is about this part of the spirit's book is about the moral laws and this one is what the one of them right they earn to the law of work okay anybody else guys Luis, i have a question hmm we have Gail. There's art. So perhaps we want Gail to introduce. Ah, uh, Gail Peters. Peters something. Peter Gail. Doc. Yeah, Gail, would you like to introduce yourself to us? Okay. I don't I think, think she left. Oh, yeah. She left. I know you scary gay. Gail. <laughs> oh my. Please gale away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. And uh, any other comments, people? Nobody. Nobody would like to work a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I made my point of view quite clear on that. Um, I am uh, exceedingly lucky in my life. I have never done any labor that I didn't like and enjoy. Wow. And I would get up happy in the morning and go and do whatever it was. And it's been a number of different things. And I really, really am sad for those people that labor yeah. at jobs, which they find meaningless and unkind and unpleasant. Yeah. And I include yeah, miners in that because what the hell? Why not? I'm mm -hmm. sad for miners. 
getting on the ground. Anyway, all right, shut up, child. Yes, before I get passing it on to Una, uh, I do agree. I worked seven years in a bank and, you know, I didn't fit in very much, although I worked very well there, right? Uh, I was glad when I left. <laughs> Una, it's your turn. I have two questions. So on the self-preservation thing, at the obligation for self-preservation, does that tie in with the, the obligation or the thing that you shouldn't commit suicide? Is it along those lines? And if you are doing work that is not spiritually enhancement, enhancing you, what effect mm -hmm. or does that have an effect? I know it does, I presume it does have an effect on your body, but does it have an effect on, <clears throat> on other things in terms of your spiritual development while you're in the incarnation? Well, let's see if I could understand what you're saying. And uh, for example, let's see if I get there. I remember uh, a video I saw on YouTube from the BBC, London. And it was a guy, an Amer about an American guy called, called Gordon Allen. He had been through uh, an out-of-body experience, near-death experience, more precisely. <clears throat> And uh, he had he had he was a typhoon. No, not a typhoon, a tycoon, right? <clears throat> he was a tycoon and a ruthless millionaire in the Western business of the United States. And after he had this he had this pneumonia problem, and he almost died. He had uh, a near death experience, and he changed completely his life. Right, he came. Uh, back, uh, he, he gave away most of his fortune and he decided to have a simple life. And one of the experts that were talking about uh, OBEs and near-death experiences, he was saying that many people who did have real, authentic uh, uh, near-death experiences, they changed professions. For example, instead of being a police officer, the guy decided to be a teacher of uh, young offenders, right? And things like that. This is a, I think, uh, I, uh, is it what you're talking about, Una? Because sometimes your English for me is a little bit, uh, and I think, yes, there is a, there is a, there are some professions that more car, are more karmic, you have to know, and yeah. others, <clears throat> there are others that, uh, for example, once I remember I met a guy, he became a spiritist and he has a, he was a police officer, but he was very, very on edge because of that, and that very much uh, worried. And uh, if you could see, I could see him because I was teaching police officers and I could see him, he was really miserable in, in, among them. And all the, all the others were relaxed and doing their things, but he was in a very bad situation. And he said, and said to me, I, I really, I badly want to get out of this job because this job is hurting me so much because the, the sense of the, the things I have is, uh, is just so different. And, uh, but of course, sometimes, Una, sometimes the circumstances are so strong that you need to go through those, to that profession, through that work, although that work is not what you dream of, you understand? Yeah, I do. Thanks, Lucia. Yeah, that helps. Should, should you ask yeah. something about suicide, didn't you, Una? I did, yeah. I asked about the uh, obligation mm. of self-preservation and suicide, how, that, how those two things fit together. Yeah. Well, I asked two questions. Well, well I, can give you a, I can give you a, a quick one-off answer about that is one size does not fit all. The Roman Catholic Church says suicide equals hell forever. Okay, well, that's bullshit. The suicide is a hundred or a thousand different variations. How did the person commit suicide? Why did they commit suicide? These are all questions in these thousand different variations. And some of them are positive experiences and rewarded. And the others are not are less so. But either way, all stories have happy endings. So there may be a pause after a suicide generally, because they don't, because generally everybody frowns on it. But on the other hand, there are plenty of good reasons for doing it. Josephine? Uh, it, it, um, Anna? Yep. Anna? Yeah, uh, uh, let's 
uh, Una asked that I was thinking about um, all these stories on the Japanese people when they they were so hard on those you know uh, officers and uh, all of a sudden they just decide to commit suicide because I guess they find they found no meaning to their life right like they feel themselves like a machine, just waking up, going to the office, working hard, going back home, and uh, not really uh, interacting with people or um, going deeper in their uh, uh, growth process or improvement pro I don't know. What do you think, Louisa? Okay, let maybe Josephine first uh, speak and then we talk about a little bit more. Let's see. Okay. So, Thank you, uh, Giles, yeah. uh, I agree with you in certain degree. In other degree, I a little bit disagree why. Uh, definitely, why you commit suicide is absolutely taken into consideration. Like some people, sometimes they are uh, have a mental problem. They don't really want to do that. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes it is a crisis. Uh, but when it's very conscious, um, all the end, all the start is going to be happy. I agree with you. Um, but I think what I have been reading Chico books and all the books, um, they really regret. And they regret because uh, being in this reincarnation, reincarnation, it's very hard to come because we have 32 billion spirits trying to come here and we are 32 billion spirits and we are only 7 billion people. So it's it's something that is really, how I say that? There is a lot of con concurrence. Can I say concurrence, honey? Yeah. Competition. 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 In, in a kind of way. But so when you kill yourself, you lose this huge chance in the universe that the spiritual world gave you to go to this life. And what I note in the books, they regret when they realize what the chance they lose. Yes, in the end, everybody's going to be fine. But I see um, if you can avoid and it's conscious, try, think about that and don't do it. Even though we don't understand why now our life is miserable, it's horrible, it's terrible. There is a whole picture that we don't see from less lives in the future. So I would say hang tight, don't do it. Keep it here, pray a lot, ask your mentor, ask your guides. Um, if you do, yes, in the end, it's going to be fine. But I think you're going to have a moment that you're going to regret and not going to be good, if that makes sense. That's I quite agree with you. It does make sense. I personally put a gun to my head with a bullet in the chamber and my finger or thumb on the trigger and then said, what the hell? Let me see what happens. I bet I bet some good things are going to happen in the future. And of course, since then, everything's been peachy. Oh, thank you, Giles, for not doing <laughs> Sometimes life is really hard on us. And yeah. everybody. just try to work. become faithful and believe in the spirituality, in your guides, in your angels, whatever you call. They are going to be there to help you, to support you. Okay. Debbie, thank you, guys. Thank you, Josie. Thank you, Giles. Okay, uh, I just thought, uh, I just wanted to say what's on my mind, especially since this um, subject came up. Um, you know, I was supposed to go be in at the Helping Parents Heal conference this weekend. And uh, about less than two weeks ago, I broke my arm. So I couldn't go. Sorry, so, uh, so one of the mediums that was there had an online small group thing. And I felt like I should go to that since I can't go to the one in Phoenix. So I, I signed up for it. You know, I just felt like, you know, somebody wanted to come through and I, you know, I figured it'd be my son or my mother who just passed. And uh, when he started, the first person that came through was someone who hung himself. And uh, one of the other people there, you know, one of the other participants besides me, you know, said, oh, that's mine. But I actually think it was for me. And I think it was my husband's cousin's son 
recently hung himself. Uh, they lived in the Canary Islands. And uh, and I I've, and I didn't claim him and I feel like he pushed me to join that. He wanted to get a message through to his family. Um, you know, I, I just, I asked, I asked the medium about it afterwards. He says, no, too late. I'm not getting messages now. So, um, well, that, that's who, who um, you know, Anna put on the radiation list, which I really appreciate. So I, I feel really bad for not letting him come through to me. I really feel like that's why I was in there. That's it. <laughs> well, but I think everything's going to be all right in the sense because he saw you taking action. Mm -hmm. To understand, he he knows that you took action. He knows you're talking about that. What that's really what yeah. matters to him, right? Yeah. And also, even Debbie, uh, sorry to interrupt, Luis, but you in your it's a simple way of doing this in your meditation or even a calm period in a chair where you're not going to be bothered. You can ask for the message to come through, and the message will come through. And if it doesn't happen the first time, it'll happen the second time. Sorry, I just wanted to add that. I'll, I'll try just, that. You, yeah. you don't have to Working. get complicated about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And uh, what's more, many times when a person receives a message like this, the emotion is so high that it disturbs the communication. The, com the communication is cut out, to understand. So uh, maybe it was uh, on purpose that you didn't say at that the right moment to not to connect so much emotion to the moment, and then you receive the whole message. No, I think uh, you don't need to worry about that. He is there. He's going to be helped 100 percent, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, one more thing I'd like to add about this is Shuk Xavier spoke a lot about the consequences of suicide in terms of uh, karmic pains in the future, right? Because uh, many times the spirits uh, with the suicidal, with the person who committed suicide, they try to wash away the problems that the person uh, uh, caused to uh, their bodies, you understand? To avoid the being born with uh, so many problems that the way they provoked in their lives and in their death, could cause to another reincarnation. For example, if you uh, shot your heart, you can be born with a, a serious heart problem, right? And if you hung yourself, you can be born with uh, very difficult problems in terms to, of walking and things like that. So they try, it's a lot of work in the spirit realm to wash away those uh, energies that can make karmically the person to be born like that. Right? Sometimes they just can't do this because if the person is an at, in an atmosphere, in a realm that is not very easy for the good spirits to access and help, then in terms of reincarnation, that can be uh, kind of damaging for the body. So when you need to, what we need to do is understand the people and uh, pray for them, really, because they need to be accessed by the good guys who are going to help them and in the end of course everything is going to be all right right but it's uh you're responsible yeah it drives the right everything in the end right uh, but, but sometimes a lot of work a lot of regret a lot of suffering here and there many times so uh, you need to avoid this as much as we can of course the leader This subject is very um, dear to me because I believe in my previous lives I have committed suicide. So I, I've read a lot about it. And in the, in the spirit release meetings that we have, we, we have had many cases. Last week, uh, we had uh, a meeting just for suicide, uh, suicidals in, in the meeting. So it's very, uh, Vladimir is here, he, he was there, he knows. So uh, it's very uh, vivid to me. So uh, I, I would like to say that uh, it's not an exact science, like Ajayo says, not one case doesn't fit yeah. all. So um, we have like people who commit suicide under 
a very bad influence, a negative influence, like a, an obsession. We have studied here the obsession, the bad influences. So when when it happens, it's like um, it's like when you murder someone and in a, in self defense, you, you or in a state uh, what we call in law a state of need. So you you you're not responsible for your act sometimes. Uh, there, there is this medium here. She was a friend of uh, Chico Xavier. She's called Ivone Pereira, and she she wrote a book called Memory of a Suicide, and um, she tells all about it. And um, and uh, so she there is one of her books that tells this case of a girl who was under a very bad influence and she committed suicide under this very bad influence. So she was helped uh, and she could be helped because of that. But uh, still that has some very negative effects on the people of the family that surrounds her. And uh, uh, anyway, you, if you do that, because you are going through a very rough thing, a very difficult um, task that you have, eventually you, you have to come back to this task because uh, uh, this challenge hasn't been shown to you by, by chance. That's something you have to go through. So if you didn't make it for the first time, uh, even when you are helped and it, there is this very huge group uh, that is uh, led by Maria, the mother of Jesus Christ. She, she has a very big group that helps suicidal people. And uh, after they are helped, they will have to come back to the same experience because they, like Jaya said, you, you failed the experience. So you have to go back and take it over. I don't know, take it over is not the right word, right? Do it so over again. Yeah, okay. So you have again. to do it again. You have to do it again. And uh, and it's more complicated the second time because uh, in general, it's more complicated because uh, you have all these um, consequences like Luis said that maybe sometimes if, if you had poison, then you have this throat with a problem in in your next life, Leda, or maybe the, the reason that it's uh, the more complicated the second time is the second time you do it, you don't commit suicide, which means you now have to work through the challenge, and of course you've got to do whatever social service will make up for the people you hurt, which which is not as much as you think, because people uh, there we're individuals for the moment. Um, okay, I just wanted to say that the second time is more challenging because you don't commit suicide and then you've got to meet the challenge, whatever it was, that annoyed you and made you kill yourself last time and this time you work through it. Yeah, and not it, always. It, it, not, it might not happen always. more than once as well. I read, yeah. I read auto writers that said it's actually happened, it can happen two or three hopefully, times in a row. Yeah, yeah hopefully, hopefully you, you don't get to commit suicide the second time. So you, you have all the help to, to do that in, in this hospital that Maria takes her patients. They have all the training and the help not to do that the second time. But sometimes it happens and it's so sad because uh, uh, it's a lot of suffering sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And uh, we should all pray for for people who commit suicide and for our, ourselves to to be able to uh, do like you did Giles and stick around no matter what because things always get better right thank you Leda thank you Anna this book and I do not know if I will have time enough to, 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 to say what I have to say because I have 10% of battery right now but um, <laughs> I right. just recalled uh, two stories about uh, uh, from this book that Leda just mentioned one of them is about this uh, young um, young lady and uh, 
she committed suicide by jumping over her window and uh and the reason why he did that she did that was because she was under a very very bad influence uh, all the spirits that didn't didn't want her to succeed in her lifetime in this lifetime uh due to previous you know issues you know in past incarnations past lives but anyway she was really trying hard she was a good lady she was she had a good heart and good intentions and this time she had people helping her to overcome the challenges and uh but still the 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 the, the bad spirits they they were not giving in they they were just insisting insisting and uh one day um they just succeeded you know uh you know and the the this young lady she jumped out of her window and uh, sure enough you know as it was not 100 percent of her fault this time then as soon as uh she she landed on the floor her grandmother was there waiting for her and to help her immediately um and um and yeah there was this this other case talking about this uh this person who uh killed himself with a a, a gunshot in the heart and uh and sure enough the next incarnation the person had heart issues because you know um yeah there was some some damage done to the paris spirit some damage done to you know uh to the body and then it was something that that person had to face still in this new lifetime and overcome evidently well thank you very much two cases i remember one case too by chico xavier if, uh, a woman came to him, came up to him to start to talk about her son who was in the hospital, was in bad situation there, and the doctors decided to remove one. The, the, they had already removed one leg, and then there was been to remove another leg, amputation, I think we say, and uh, and they went to ask Shiku, why is it going on? Why is it going through this kind of? Is he going through this kind of suffering? And Shiku got some information from the spirits that said that he asked the spirits to make them make him avoid suicide, whatever happened. And one of the situations was that they were going to cut his legs off to because he wanted to, to commit suicide again. So <laughs> the spirits were trying to find a way to make him stay. Right, to avoid because he had already committed suicide several times in the past and was uh, tempted to do this again, this reincarnation. And that's why he was going through the difficult problems to avoid, uh, to make him avoid the, the, this uh, action, right? But there you go. Okay, Josephine. Now, I just want to come back to the Debbie um, um, case. Yeah. Debbie, um, if I believe it's my personal, but if he can communicate already, that shows that he's fine. He's getting better. He's getting help already. So um, just do what Jayo says, pray, meditate, send all the energy. And we can even keep doing some more vibrations in the meeting for him. Like uh, not maybe next Saturday, we can keep it like at some support. But to me, he he had help for sure that he uh, because he's already able to communicate with us. So that's a course. good sign. It's a very yeah. good sign uh, coming back to your specific um, situation. I believe that too. Where being able to communicate to the search for help is wonderful. Wonderful. It's a it's a sign that he is really upgraded there <laughs> in terms of situation. That's very good news. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. I completely forgot that because the um, asking for help, no matter how badly off you are, if you're in one of those uh, dark and cold and muddy uh, places in the real bottom, the, the, the ladder to the light starts with asking for help. 
if you cannot ask for help, that means you think whatever it is, you deserve it, or they deserved it, whatever you so it's not asking for help. But it's very nice to know that any of us, no matter what we've done, when we get in the afterlife and, and we find that it's that our life is not good because of something we've done, it's simple. We ask for help. Mm. And then starts the atonement. And <clears throat> You work as a waiter somewhere <laughs> in some of, one of those cafes where there's a, a hundred thousand humans and they all think they're French and they don't believe they've died. And you <laughs> go and work in a cafe there. Mm -hmm. I, there's, oh, there's such a lot of possible social work to do. Sorry. That's it. Indeed. Thank you, Giles. Well, guys, I think we can move on in the questions, can't we? Yes. Number 719. Uh, who would like to read the question? Giles, you are the last one, just like Anna says. <laughs> 719. Is it blamable in a man to seek after the comforts and enjoyments of corporeal, corporeal life? Sorry, mortal life. I should have changed the word. Is it blamable yeah, well... if a person seeks after comforts and enjoyments of corporeal life? Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated than this one. Are we capable of if we seek our own well-being? <laughs> it's a little more simple. Right? Okay, what about that, guys? Uh, I see. Yeah, I, I think every, everything in the, in the world is a matter of balance, right? So evidently, we must seek well-being so we can do all the labor and, uh, you know, do all the things that we committed to do in this lifetime. Now, um, if you spend a lot of time in your life just doing that, like people spending like four hours in the, in the gym or, you know, for bodybuilding, then uh, we, we better, we, we probably will need to think better about that case. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Ana. Una? Yeah, I think that's probably balance there's a um, that it's not actually a, like looking after your corporeal needs or being comfortable and enjoying things isn't a problem but i think when you make those things more important than spiritual growth or service yeah. to others or trying to have a meaningful life where materialism and and possessions and things become your god i think that's a problem mm -hmm. wow i think you said it all yeah, yeah. The spirits yeah. usually say this, we need to work with a purpose. What's your purpose? If your purpose is a spiritual and thing, you are really doing very well. Because many times we need to work, well, everything we need to do is to grow spiritually. But what does it have to do, physical work with the spiritual growth? Well, of course, we need the basic well-being to do, to, to, mm -hmm. to live and to, to search for our goals. I once, I've heard of a research in, in England they researched, then they came to the conclusion that it was a study that if you are homeless, if you are sick, right, if you are uh, completely penniless and you get some money and you have a roof suddenly and then you have health, this money conquered to happiness to you. But other than that, nothing more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything was that you add is just an illusion in terms of, and that's what um, the philosophy and psychology of consumerism ha works, right? And uh, they know, I was talking to a psychologist uh, of consumerism. He said, uh, we know, we said that everything we sell has to bring to the client, to the customer, some frustration. He believes that that thing will complete him or her, but in the end it won't because Right, three, four months later, he will want more and more and more because that thing will never, things will never bring. But so, so I think it was this research was very nice, right? If you are homeless and you get a house, if you are sick and you get health, all right, money is bringing happiness to you. Although, other than that, uh, there's a doubt, right? That's a big question mark in the. Yeah. Okay. So who is going to read the answer? Let me read the answer so okay, we can move please, on. Please, please. 
the whoops the desire of of uh, bodily well-being is natural to man god only prohibits excess because excess is inimical to self-preservation he has not made it a crime to seek after enjoyment if that enjoyment may not be acquired at another's expense and if it be not of a nature to weaken either your moral or your physical strength yeah. boy there's a complicated answer you need to be an a reader to be a get through that and understand it <laughs> yeah there's okay tell me what it said louise Yes, look at that. I'm going to read this as I think this is a little bit more simple that well being is natural desire. God only prohibits abuse because it is contrary to self preservation. Yes, when you abuse a bit, you're going to maybe get addicted and have health problems, psychological problems, right? God does not consider it a crime for you to seek your own well being if it is not gained at another's expense. Well, this is a big problem. <laughs> And if it does not weaken either your moral or physical strength, another big problem because many times comfort, right, can make your morals uh, get weaker. <laughs> Don't you think so, guys? Can uh, I can quickly throw in here this uh, idea of God only prohibits excess. Well, he's not doing a good job of prohibiting excess, is he? <laughs> it's just a matter of words. Now, when it prohibits it, when you drink too much, you get sick, for example. So <laughs> that's the prohibition, right? <laughs> well, all right. Fair There's enough. a sanction. And the sanction, when they say prohibit, <laughs> because there is an excess, there will be a bad consequence as, an, as a sanction to the law, right? But not, of course, prohibition in the sense of a, a ruler. And then the other guy, um, folks, folks, law, please, right? please excuse my levity. I uh, am feeling happy today for no good reason, <laughs> mainly oh, because I'm alive nice. and not hurting. Laughter. Entertainment and laughter. I've heard of e that once. Exactly. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, our purpose in existence. Anyway, um, if I'm being a bit facetious sometimes, please forgive me. I'm, I'm not intending problem, to be rude no to anybody. So very welcome. All right. Yeah, Louise, when, when he says God prohibits, to me, is the same as, you know, hey, that's a natural law. For every action, there will be a reaction. That's it. That's the law, yes. Okay. Uh, I think we can go on for 7.20. Oh, okay. Sounds funny. Una, would you like to read it, please, for us, please? If I can put it in the right place here, because there's something going wrong. <laughs> Everything's sure. going wrong in, in I think, astrologically. <laughs> it's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, everything. Look, I get there. Oh, I got yeah. it. Yay! Yay. It's Yay. a sign. Oh. It's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of whatever you want to say. Hey, look at this. Look at this. The computer is, you, is, has a you want life me to read on its own. <laughs> the 720, if you have that old. We're over the rainbow. Okay. The okay, please. Yeah. There you go, Anna. Read the question, yeah? Yeah, the question, please. Do voluntary privations that have an equally voluntary expiation as their purpose have any merit in God's sight? <laughs> well, there's a short answer. You can go to the answer, I guess, and then we discuss, right? Look. Do good to others and you will have greater merit. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I think. I believe that, right? I believe in that. Because yeah, sometimes you, you lock yourself into a monastery and spend 20 years there, and they say, do good to others and you have a greater merit. Do you think so too, guys? I, I, Giles, go on, please. There was a little bit missing from that one. Um, the mine has, um, can you ac thereby acquire more merit than is to be acquired by any self imposed privations? Now, the self imposed mm -hmm. privations are exactly what Luis talked about a monk in a monastery who is doing no good to anybody uh, and, not even, and not himself either. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, yeah. Yeah, there, I think I've read one or two. Ah, sorry. Of, Go on. 
So I've read, I think I've read one or two accounts of like people who've recalled past lives as, as say a nun and that kind of thing. And when they get back to the, to the afterlife, they haven't actually made much progress because even though they've been in, in a, a religious order or whatever, they haven't really done service to others. Yeah. And they haven't really made much progress. Yeah, I, um, let me add, Una, this is absolutely right. There's also, which is much more common, there's a, a, a type of life where you arrange to have nothing happen to you. <clears throat> you get born, you mm. live in the same little village somewhere, you speak the local language, you uh, have the local prejudices, whatever they are, mm. and you do some crappy job that keeps your, you and your family perhaps uh, uh, alive and well, but you meet no challenges. And those lives are exceedingly common because this is a tough place to have a have a uh, incarnation, and those lives are much more common than you think because you look at people uh, and think, "Well, I got a real problem going on," but in fact, they got nothing going on at all. Um, anyway, sorry, I'm muttering. Yes. Okay. Thank I just you. got one second, Anna, before you just because comment what Jalo just said and Una. I think Jalo Una is saying like when somebody came and go to a monastery or go to be an eremiter and go totally outside the world and then they lose the chance. Because in my point of view, the example you just said, Giles, if I'm able to take care of my family, I'm doing a lot already. And even to keep myself alive and be in the village. So I think that's a problem of very merit, a lot of merit. How is it that kind of merit? Yeah, you, 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 you would do a good job if you are able to take care of your family already. That makes sense. Just, just that. Anna, sorry, Anna, come on, come back. I think she's gone. I think uh, I'm, um, I'm I took gone. her last chance to talk. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. Now I feel I'm mean, like the karma is going to come. We'll get back to you later. <laughs> no worries. Look, the um, this monastery type of life, um, you have uh, you you've let widen your vision and imagine that there are at least 500, if not a thousand different kind of lifetimes that I could describe that are exactly the same as a monastery life. You do nothing, you help nobody, you, you don't damage yourself, you just get through it. And mm -hmm. there are thousands of different uh, activities uh, which, you can, which you can see if you desire such an incarnation. Uh, with a lot of people around, so a lot of different things happen. And uh, the monastery type uh, incarnation is much more common than you think. There's probably a thousand outside the monastery living a monastery type life and one in the monastery doing it. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd put it that way around, which is why I'm making this speech. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think one of the most important progress for us here is to be less selfishness. Selfish. Uh, selfish. And we, we are so selfish that if we, if we learn to be less selfish, being with family, taking care of family, it's good for us. Take care of another people, it's good for us. So uh, Alan Kardec say himself that the, the worst problems in humanity is proud and selfish. Yes. Selfishness. So if, if we help people in any way we can, uh, if, we, if we are better doing it in family, it's the best way for us to learn it. I think it's the best way. <laughs> and yeah. it, but monastery, it's really difficult unless you are really with this purpose inside of you to help in some way to be less selfishness, less selfish. Mm -hmm. So if if we are trying to do it very hard, it's a good way. But I think in monastery, it's more difficult. Yeah, the problem is, one more time, is the degree of consciousness of the creature, right? As, yeah. uh, for example, Joseph said something that's really like Giles, because if you are a, an old spirit, you have the capacity of helping many people, and you just get stuck into your circle, and then the Greg Gary sensation of the egotistic and selfish sensation of having a family, and surrounded by only your family, of course, you can get into even trouble because you can get into the spiritual realm and say, hey, guy, your capacity was so big, 
And one more time, you reincarnate to just to be right on account of your guys or people. And that's all, nothing else. If you didn't share your light, that's Jesus Christ said, share your light to the world, right? So, of course, but what for a person with less capacities or less uh, opportunities in that reincarnation, maybe raising a family is already something very nice, very interesting, very good. Even if this person is a spiritually superior, but mm -hmm. in, the, in that reincarnation, that person doesn't have so much opportunity of culture, of access and communication and people. But uh, what we're talking about is so serious that there are real, some peoples, peoples in the plural, yeah. There are some peoples that have, they have this problem. They are so close together. They are so, that they spend some hundreds of years and one day there is an ultimatum from the spirit world and said, now guys, you're going to blast off. You know, you're going to have to, to change ways because you've been spending so many centuries doing so little thing and evolving so little that you, uh, life is going to take action and try to make you move on faster. <laughs> and that comes... Uh, it happens really with people, individuals, and peoples. Okay, the, so uh, continuing on the answers, Anna, can you go on, please? Are there any meritorious? Are there any, any meritorious voluntary privations? Yes, the privation of meaningless pleasures, because it frees you from matter and elevates your soul. Merit means resisting the temptation that drives you to excess and the taste for useless things. And it means taking from your own necessities in order to give to those in need. If, if privation is nothing more than pretense, it is only a mockery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is something hard, right? Uh, Please, can mm -hmm. you propose one thing? I don't know it's too much and if it's too much let me know maybe we mm -hmm. take more five minutes in the end and make another vibration now we know Debbie for the show and maybe for everybody that could be in the same situation again or it would be too much no let's go we can do that now no problem like if, if everybody one more question in the five last minutes do it just so oh, okay in the five last minutes okay all right so any 71 Opa. oops oops Okay, I'm going to read this one. 721. A life of mortifications through asceticism has been practiced since ancient times and among different cultures. Is it meritorious from any point of view? Mortifications through asceticism has been practiced since ancient times. Okay. What do you think, people? I think there's got to be a purpose for it. Well, yeah. have you asked us a question? Hey, Art got his hand up first, so he gets Hi, to Art. he gets no to answer. No time, no see. No time, no here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if uh, you know, sometimes uh, they were locked themselves away to do copying work, uh, and they were doing something beneficial uh, while they were uh, sequestering themselves from life in general. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, I think we can. Any other guys? Any other suggestions and opinions? Because I think it's in the answer here. Uh, Art, can you read the answer for us, please? Says the word, the word last one. Okay, I'm in the middle of a page here. here. Uh, ask here. for whom it is useful, and you will have your answer. If it only serves the one who practices it, and if it hinders him or her from doing good to others, it is selfish. Whatever may be the pretext under which it is disguised, submitting oneself to privations by working for others is true mortification and is in accord with Christian charity. Okay, there we go. I think... Uh... It's something very clear, right? The purpose is everything in life, right? Why you're doing that and who is going to be, well, to whom it's going to be beneficial. 
Okay, people, I think we can get into the prayer. Who wants to pray for us, Josie, today? Louis, not going to happen, but okay. so let's make the vibration and you can lead everybody. Come on. I was thinking about Una. What about Una? Could you pray for us, Una? Me? Yeah. I'm coughing, but no, no, Lewis, I'll do it another night. I'm coughing a lot, so no, that wouldn't be very good. <laughs> yes, Come exactly. on, Una, you're Irish, for heaven's sake. <laughs> that means Maybe she got it from Wendy Zenitz, right? She was yes, to... <laughs> that means Online. you can talk the head off a, a camel <laughs> if you feel Online like coffee. it. <laughs> Please, why do we put the song and then you just take her to the right, another, um, not mm. vibration, I forgot the name. Um, radiation for, for Debbie, Debbie's. Okay, so let's go on. I'm going to share the song again with you. Just the song, I'm not going to share the image, right? Just the sound. And we could uh, really think about Debbie, um, the case of your cousin and everybody who for some reason took their lives and send the, the okay. good energy for all okay. that. Okay, let me just put the song again here. Louise, another thing, stop recording, I think. Ah, uh, good. Yeah, so it's more private. We can talk after. Yeah. Okay. 